Good day or good evening. This is Dr. Pauline Santiago, pediatric ophthalmologist from the Philippines. With children developing myopia or nearsightedness, especially when it worsens, parents will definitely come across orthokeratology as a means to control progression and ask whether this is a feasible intervention for their children. This short video was requested by my clinic assistant with the objective of responding to patient queries about orthokeratology. I am a lecturer for Stada Philippines whose products are not mentioned in this report. I am an ophthalmologist, but I do not dispense contact lenses. The recommendation at the end of this report is my personal bias and based on my evaluation of existing studies. These are my institutional affiliations, the University of the Philippines College of Medicine and its teaching university hospital, the Philippine General Hospital, which houses the Centro of Talmologico Jose Rizal. I am also connected with the Medical City, St. Luke's Medical Center, Manila Doctors Hospital, and the Galileo Surgery Center. Orthokeratology makes patients wear contact lenses overnight to temporarily flatten the cornea and provide clear vision during the day without need for glasses or contact lenses. It claims to correct up to minus 6 diopters of myopia and up to minus 1.75 diopters of astigmatism. Orthokeratology works by slowing axial elongation or lengthening of the eye. Here are some studies that shows it works. By reducing the rate of axial elongation by 22 to 41% and or by 13 to 86 millimeters. Dr. Herowitz shared his video online as to how orthokeratology works. A rigid gas permeable lens, purposely a tight fit, is placed on the cornea just before sleeping. As you sleep, the cornea flattens and conforms to the shape of the RGP. Notice the flattening of the dome of the cornea. When you wake up in the morning, you remove this lens and experience the clearest vision in the morning when the lenses have just been removed. The flattened cornea can now put the image on the retina, allowing clear vision. In most cases, refraction slowly changes towards the nighttime and is worst by the time one is about to sleep, just before replacing the orthokeratology lens. For patients to see the analogy, I like to borrow the band tradition of foot binding in China, where our female ancestors' feet were bound tightly to prevent the foot from elongating. The result is a small-sized foot, but deformed. Some studies have even shown that ortho-K can work synergistically with low-dose atropine. But there are problems that can be devastating and have serious consequences. While many complications are minor, it is the occurrence of microbial keratitis that is serious and can lead to corneal scarring with a significant percentage requiring surgery such as corneal transplants. Aside from the corneal opacity, glaucoma and cataract formation have also been reported as sequelae. The overall risk of infection in children wearing orthokeratology is 14 times compared to non-contact lens wearer and 11.6 times compared to RGP or extended soft contact lens wearers worn the traditional way. Presumably because of the requirement of overnight wear, which goes against what we usually teach contact lens wearers, that is to wear lenses during waking hours and to remove the contact lenses and not to wear them to sleep. This is the main reason why I do not recommend orthokeratology. I also cannot help in the residual refraction as this varies according to the time of day 
with residual refraction lowest upon removal and highest as one nears sleeping time. The corneas are also often distorted with flattening sometimes off-centered from the pupil and does not permit an accurate refraction. Therefore, for patients who insist on undergoing orthokeratology, a sign off from their ophthalmologic care, unless they present with complications, in which case I will co-manage these with our cornea colleagues. So is orthokeratology recommended for your child with myopia? Ultimately, it is a decision you have to make as a parent. Does the promise of controlling myopia progression and its sequelae outweigh the risk of infection and permanent corneal damage? These are my references. Thank you.